So we talked a little bit about the knot program, distinguishing that from home gardening. And again, we talked a little bit about mimicking those natural cycles. So it's kind of fun because you can take it as far or as easy as you want. I mean, a lot of people, I warn you, it's kind of addictive. You start getting into it and you realize how much there is to learn and you just can get, a, you know, you can become a bit of an evangelist. So, you know, it's like you, you want to go, you can start with as little as you want. You know, like I, I stopped at Fred Meyer this morning because I wanted to do a demonstration and they've got organic miracle Grow potting soil. I mean, that's great. And if that's what organic is going to mean to you, then great. It's still a big improvement over using regular miracle Grow. But you can go the whole hog. You can get the chickens and do the composting and do everything else. So you can just do as much or as little as you like. We talked a lot about these things, so I'm going to skip over these. I don't want to talk too much. I think you guys already know organic. This is my garden. And so I just wanted to show you this, that organic gardens don't... This is a fairly... Um, I actually grow vegetables in this garden, you can't see them so much from here, but I do a lot of potager style gardening. So I mix herbs, fruits, vegetables, and ornamental plants in all of my gardens. And that's a great way to mimic that natural eco cycle, you know, because you've got all those things in nature. Nature does not make orchards of apple trees or orchards of hazelnut trees. Nature mixes everything up together. So the more you do that, I basically have no pest problems in my yard, which my neighbours can't believe because my neighbours have a really nice yard, but they spray everything. They have people come and spray it. I don't have aphids. If I do, they're on one plant because I use a couple of decoy plants. So I use artichokes as my decoy plants, which is a good tip if you have a lot of roses like I do. Plant a couple of artichokes somewhere you don't care about. All the aphids go to those. So that's a great, great tip. But you can really make your garden look very attractive. You can have a nice mix of ornamentals. You can grow fabulous vegetables. I feed my entire family and lots of people here and, and all sorts of other random people from my garden. So. An ecological approach is really important. Organic gardening is all about the soil. You don't feed your plants, you feed the soil. So the good thing, and I'm going to skip over this, you can download this later, it'll take too long to get into it, but it's all about ideal soil and building soil and tilth and organic matter. And I want you to have this information. If you want to go look it up, great. If you want to look at how much nitrogen you need to put into your plants, how you can keep nitrogen in your garden. But I don't want to get too technical and have the rest of you glaze over. So I've also got some information in here about particular organic gardening methods. Now the nice thing about herb gardening is you're not even really going to need to use most of these methods. These methods are um, really useful if you're doing organic vegetable gardening, which we talked a little bit about last month. But herbs create their own little ecosystem so quickly that they usually smother out weeds, they usually repel insects, um, you just really, you mulch them, mulching is important, but you don't want to mulch them too much because you don't want to retain too much water. Herbs are just about the easiest thing you can grow, so you can tell they're one of my favourites. For vegetable gardens, if you have a really weedy patch of ground that you want to start, so if you've got a lawn or if you've got an area that's full of like really nasty weeds that's maybe a garden that's gone to seed, you can use a cover crop for a couple of cycles, so you can do a spring cover crop and then a fall cover crop and then the next year you could actually plant it out into your herb garden. So you'll get information in compost there. Compost is just my favourite thing. You can't go wrong with compost. I do recommend that you compost all of your herbs that you don't use. Um, for example, when you cut back your rosemary in the fall and strip off your rosemary, to, you, know, you can dry it, strip it off. You can then put those stalks straight into your compost and they look like twigs, so you think, well, that's not going to break down. But they provide pockets of air in your compost. So you can pretty much compost anything. You can compost all of, if you're like me and you let a lot of things go to seed, which is um, called creating volunteers. And it's a great thing if you're a lazy gardener and you're a cheapskate like me because nature takes care of it for you. You get all these great seedlings the next year. But you can, if you've got too many, I mean, I just have so much catnip, I would just not know what to do with it. I mean, there's only so much catnip tea you can drink and still be a functioning person. So, yeah, because it, it's a soporific, so it helps you sleep, right? So, you know, you can only drink so much of it, you can only dry so much of it. So I do, I cut it back and I shove it all in the compost and it's fabulous. So. You can make a lot of compost yourself and if you can't make your own compost you can buy it in a truck. This is the delivery at my place because even though I, I actually have horses and alpaca, 
I compost all of their waste, I compost all of my garden debris, but I still don't make enough compost for my liking, so I have it delivered every year. We'll talk about deep cultivation. Fertilizing is unnecessary for herbs, and that's really important because a lot of people put fertilizer on everything. Most herbs do not like being fertilized. It'll actually, um, you can easily burn them and it's totally unnecessary. And just keep in mind, everything you put on your soil that the plants don't need and that the soil web doesn't need, just gets washed away down into the waterways. So it's completely unnecessary to use any fertilizer on your herb garden, which is really nice. Weed control for your herbs, you just gotta weed by hand. It's the easiest thing. Mulching is really important. I mulch with a garden mulch, which is a half compost. Mulch is a bit of an issue with herbs because you don't want to retain too much moisture. Your biggest issue with herbs is fungal disease. If you, if you have too much mulch and it's holding moisture onto the um, stalk or into the leaves of the herb, you can get fungal disease and that's an issue in Oregon with all the rain. Fungal diseases are one of our biggest issues here. So you want to keep your mulch. I always use mulch that will actually feed my soil. So I always apply either compost or this garden mulch it's called, which is half compost and it's nice and fine and it looks pretty. So it keeps my husband happy, but it's not bark dust. What's the other half? Um, it's a mixture of fine um, bark, bark dust and they do use some mushroom compost or garden waste. Grimm's actually collect a lot of the stuff that's compostable. You see those compost bins. So they take that and they chop it up. It's hot composted which is really important when you're bringing things into your garden you want to make really particularly if you're organic so every weed seed in there has the potential to, to germinate you really need to make sure you use a reliable source because you do not want compost that has ivy clippings and you know noxious weed seed heads and that has happened. Yeah, so you, you need to make sure you're buying it from a reputable source and then it is hot composted because hot composting gets the compost to between 140 and 160 degrees which will kill most of the weed seeds. It won't kill all of them but it kills most of them and it kills most of the nasty pathogens. So it's still not going to kill things like um, black spot for roses which is a fungal disease. So um, you know don't put your nasty rose clippings into your compost you actually should put them out with your household waste don't put them in your compostable stuff either because then you're just spreading black spot around Portland which none of us like sheet mulching if you're starting a herb garden from scratch this is a really good thing to do has anyone heard of lasagna gardening okay good so yeah basically you can stick like six sheets of newspaper on the ground or some cardboard add some straw or whatever you have really you can use straw you don't have to and then you put your garden soil in leave it for a couple of months keep it wet and then you'll be able to stick a trowel right through it it'll kill the lawn underneath and you can plant directly into it and that is a great way to make an instant garden it's really easy and really fast and it's good for vegetable gardens too managing pests there's some different alternatives here but the most important thing is diversity so don't do an entire garden of one herb. Mix them up. I mean it's more attractive to start with and frankly you're not going to need that much of any one herb to use. I mean some people do it because it's pretty but it's an issue whenever you have any type of monoculture you, you have potential for insects. Integrated pest management that's a whole other talk on its own and again you're not really going to need it so much with your herbs but your herbs will actually attract beneficial insects into your garden. So growing herbs, particularly flowering herbs like dill, they are going to, and um, calendula, they're actually going to attract the beneficials. They are actually part of an integrated pest management solution. So they're fabulous for your garden.